Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this lesson, we'll be looking at discounted profitability criteria for project evaluation for our chemical engineering engineering economics course. Again, I just included this briefly. You can pause and read these if you need a review of what the, all these acronyms stand for. We've been looking at a typical cash flow diagram as presented in uh, Turton et al.'s textbook, Analysis, Synthesis, and Design of Chemical Processes. And we now want to look at discounted techniques for analyzing the full life of this project. We've discussed before that we can do this based on time, cash, or interest. And we could do it non-discounted or discounted. Discounted is better because it includes the time value of money. And on large, long-term projects, we definitely want to include this. So we're going to be defining our metrics in this lesson. We're going to do this by discounting all cash flows back to time zero which normally we think of as the present time, the beginning of the project. We're also going to be sure that we are always using discounted measures when we're talking about large capital projects. Our time-based metric is the discounted payback period. This is the time required after startup to recover the fixed capital investment for the project where you've discounted all of the cash flows back to time zero. Just like with the non-discounted techniques, a smaller value of the payback period, whether it's discounted or non-discounted, the smaller values will be better. We also have a net present worth or net present value of a project. This is the cash-based metric that we most commonly used. It's equivalent to the cumulative cash position. But we're doing this based on dollars that have been brought back to today's dollars. At the equivalent to the cumulative cash ratio is the present value ratio. Again, this is the sum of all discounted positive cash flows over the, over the sum of all discounted non-negative cash flows with absolute values. And we're going to be sure that we are always using discounted values for the present value ratio. And finally, we have the interest rate-based metric, which is the discounted cash flow rate of return. So DCF ROR in our textbook, you will frequently see people just refer to this as the rate of return. This is done by figuring out what is the interest rate that brings the net present value for the project to zero. So you sum up all of the cash flows for each year and then multiply those times the formula for converting from present from future values to present values and you're going to modify the interest rate and you do this until you find the highest after tax interest rate for which the project just breaks even as with the non-discounted techniques, we want the largest rate of return possible for our projects. This is the example out of the textbook. And we discussed this briefly in the last lesson. But now that we need to discount each of these values, so the numbers end up being discounted, okay, so divide by at a 10% interest rate, 1.1 to the n power for whatever number of years it is. And we end up with these as our cumulative, cumulative cash flow. So at the end, looks like we have a net of $17.12 million for our project. If we break this down and look at this a little bit more closely, what we're going to see is we've got here our end of year, 
time metric, our investment amount, our depreciation, our value of our project, fixed capital investment minus the depreciation at, for every year, our revenue, our cost of manufacturing, this is so that we can figure out how much our after-tax profit is, so we can figure out our cash flow. And then this now is figuring out the sum of the cash flows. This is done both non-discounted in this, these two columns and discounted in the final two columns. So first we purchase our land, $10 million. Then we do our fixed capital investment, so another $150 million. And then we add in our working capital. So our, our initial investment is $190 million at this point in time. Now, notice that we are getting our land value back at the end, as well as our working capital. So you'll see those repeated at year 12, because we are going to get that value back. Next, let's look at our depreciation. So our depreciation schedule using the Macker's method uh, is a percentage of the fixed capital investment without the land. And we don't have a salvage value here, so therefore I don't need to subtract off the salvage. And these are just percentages. They are a table from the IRS. And then I use this to calculate the revenue minus the cost of manufacturing. I finally end up getting my cash flows discounted. Oh, let me go back to that, sorry. And <clears throat> my cumulative value. So whereas I came up with 170 million originally, with discounting it's only 17 million. So you see how important it is to remember to do the discounting on a long term large capital project because we would make some drastic mistakes. Now when you figure all this in, what you're going to see first of all is that these straight lines we had in the cash flow diagram for our non-discounted techniques always look like straight lines. And here they start looking a little bit more curved because the amount changes from year to year for our revenue. And so when you look at these, I can kind of immediately tell whether you did discounting or not, just based on whether or not your lines are straight or curved. But when you do this, you see that the payback period based on discounted techniques is nearly six years. It was just short of four years using non-discounted techniques. This is the more realistic value. If you look at our net present value, 17 million as opposed to 170 million, our present value ratio is 1.1. It's still larger than one, so that's good. But before we had a cumulative cash ratio of 1.9. And then finally, let's talk about the return on investment. Now, I can't get that from this graph. What I have to do is I play the little number game varying the discount rate. If the discount rate is zero, then it's the same as my non-discounted techniques. As I vary the rate, at 10% I had a profit. If I go to 20%, I have a loss. In order to get break even, where I go to a value of zero, it requires a discount rate of 12.1%. So that's my discounted cash flow, my rate of return is 12.1%. <clears throat> now that compares to 11.4% for the non-discounted techniques. So that one is not quite as, um, has the discounting doesn't have quite as strong a negative impact on this one. But this is something that probably is best done in a computer, um, you can do it by hand, but it's kind of a pain in the neck and people round very quickly and say, eh, close enough. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so now you've seen the basic measures of how we do discounted project economic analysis. 
we will be looking at ways to apply this to practical problems in future lessons. Thank you.